Hey folks, so Amazon have just delivered my new Samsung 990 Pro 4 terabyte NVMe SSD. I'm so excited to get this installed in my computer. I'm going to be using this for storing a lot of the videos I create for YouTube and Amazon. I'm currently using a traditional hard drive for that purpose, but as it's filling up, it's just becoming so slow and sluggish to use that it's become a right pain. So upgrading to this super fast Gen 4 NVMe is going to make a world of difference and Speaking of Gen 4, this thing supports speeds up to uh, 7,450 megabytes per second for read, 6,900 megabytes per second for write, which is bonkers crazy fast for Gen 4, really pushing the limits of that technology. Yes, you can technically get Gen 5 drives now, which are even faster than that, but my motherboard, despite being quite modern, doesn't support that. And even if it did, that would probably be overkill for now for me and would also be super expensive. So let's go ahead, get into the box here, see what the drive actually looks like, and then I'm going to set it up in my computer. There it is. Now you do have an option of purchasing these drives with a heatsink, but because my motherboard also has heatsinks for the NVMe drive storage built into it, I didn't need to spend the extra on that. It always amazes me how they can cram so much storage technology into a drive that is pretty much the same size as a piece of chewing gum. So yes, this is the 4 terabyte 990 Pro. I just need to cover up the codes there, uh, but hopefully we'll get this set up without any issue and test out the speeds of this thing. Really excited to try this out. Let's get the computer ready. So on my motherboard, I actually have two NVMe drives installed already, just underneath the graphics card here, with space for two more along here. So this is the third slot. I'm going to go ahead and get the Samsung 990 Pro set up, which should only actually take a minute or two. They're actually really easy to install. If you've never got into your computer and done PC surgery before, then I know it can be a little bit scary, but it's actually not too bad. So hopefully this will come off now, yep. Yeah. Obviously, if you have a different motherboard to me, which you probably have, then the process is going to be a little bit different. But just to show you on the underside of this cover I've just taken off, it's actually a heat sink as well. So for this one here, which is the one that's going to be covering the Samsung 990 Pro, I'll just peel that back in order to reveal the actual thermal pad before I screw this back down again. So this will go into the slot at a slight angle and then just rest down there. Now the screw that goes in here will actually have been supplied by your motherboard, okay, not the SSD. SSD, NVMe SSDs do not come with the M.2 screws they are given by your motherboard manufacturer. So, so with the drive set up now, I am going to go ahead and remove the protective cover from the thermal compound. If your motherboard does not have its own heatsink, it is important that you do install a third party heatsink over the NVMe drive as they do get roasting hot. And then I just need to pop this on and screw it down. Ah yeah, and the second end, so that's nicely fitted. Took a little bit of finicking in order to get that in place, but that wasn't too bad by the end. Right, so hopefully, hardware-wise, we are all good to go. Gonna get the cover back on, and we'll get the PC booted up. Right, so here in Windows, if I open up Explorer here, you can see that the NVMe drive I've just installed hasn't shown up. That's not because we've installed it incorrectly, but we do need to initialize it so that Windows can read it. And to do that, I'm going to start by heading over to Create and format hard disk partitions right here, which is a setting within the control panel called disk management. Now, because Windows has detected that we have that uninstalled SSD, it's automatically come up with the initialize disk menu. So all we're going to do is go ahead and select OK here. We're going to keep it on GPT and there's no confirmation when that's done, but you'll know when it is because you'll see the disk here with this black bar saying all of the space has been unallocated. And that's because we need to assign a drive letter to it so that we can see it then in Windows. And the way we do that is by right clicking on the unallocated volume and selecting new simple volume. And then we have to assign the drive letter. Windows will pick the best choice automatically. So we shall go with that selection of E. And then, yep, we can label it if we want. I'm going to call this YouTube and backup, but you can call it whatever you want and then click finish. And again, it should just take a few seconds here. The format will be fast as it's not a full format. 
Um, and yeah, it looks like it's just formatting now and it's done. There we go. Windows can now detect the drive. And we should be able to see that in Windows Explorer. There it is. As you can see, we have the full disk free of um, files. So we're going to copy some stuff across. But before we do that, let's run a little bit of software that will show us the speeds we can expect with this drive. And that software is called Crystal Disk Mark 8. So we're just going to select the new drive, which is the E drive. And just tap all. It's then going to spend about 10 minutes or so just checking the read and write speeds sequentially for the different means of transferring files over to the disk and tell us what we can expect. So straight away, that's looking good, but I'll be right back with you once the test is complete. OK, so the test has finished. As you can see, I can expect some blazingly fast speeds with this drive over seven gigabytes per second on read and just under seven gigabytes per second on write, which is within the 10% of what is rated by Samsung themselves. And they say that what they give, the numbers they give are within 10% of what will be accurate for your drive. So before we finish today, I do want to do a real life test. I have this YouTube and backup folder here, which I want to get onto this new drive, a 453 gigabyte folder, which has large files, small files. So a good range of different files that will need to be copied. So I'm going to go ahead and in fact cut this because I want the whole file moved. Uh, we'll go ahead and open the new uh, drive that we've created as part of our NVMe installation. And I'm going to paste that and we'll see what sort of speeds we get. Now I can tell you before even seeing it, we're not going to be getting the speeds that the drive is rated for. Although I've got to say 2.4 gigabytes per second is probably some of the fastest transfer speeds I've ever seen. It is coming down a little bit now as it does different file types. Smaller files, the speeds will come down. Okay, larger files, the speeds will increase. That's just how it works. Um, it has come down quite a bit now. <laughs> Hopefully that will boost up from 10 megabytes per second soon. I think I spoke too soon uh, when I was impressed with that 2.45 gigabytes. This is why we do these real world tests. All these different types of file sizes are going to really put these drives to work. Um, but anyway, what I was saying was the drive that I'm copying from OK, is going to be a bit of a bottleneck because it's only a Gen 3 NVMe. So the new Samsung drive that is Gen 4 with those high rated speeds is going to be bottlenecked by that Gen 3 drive. But as you can see, you know, when we are getting to those larger files, the speeds are increasing nearly three gigabytes per second there. In fact, we did hit three gigabytes per second. So that's really impressive. And considering most of this 450 plus gigabytes is the larger files, I'm hoping this won't take long. It says about three minutes remaining. So the clock at the bottom of my screen, as you can see, actually, no, you can't because my camera's there. Let's move that. The clock is on 12.20. Okay, 20 minutes past 12. Let's go ahead and catch up with you once this has finished. Okay, so we're just about to finish the transfer here. We're at 97% and it looks like it's going to have taken about five minutes. We're currently on 12.23. And it looks like we're going to finish on 12.23 as well. Again, if this was just a large 450 gigabyte file, maybe an MP4 file or something, it would have done that in a fraction of the time. But because it was a large range of different file types, which is why I wanted to do that real world test, it did have to navigate those. And that's why we saw that great change and differentiation in the speed as it continued on with the copying. But hopefully, guys, you know, this has given you an idea as to the sort of performance you can expect with the Samsung 990 Pro. It is going to be, I expect, a fantastic NVMe SSD drive. It's going to be blazingly fast. But folks, hopefully the video has helped you out. Thanks for watching. And yeah, if you need to upgrade your storage, the 990 Pro may be worth checking out.